Hello, welcome to the Wallwinder podcast. Come and have a look at all 12 of my sleeping works in progress. Hello, welcome to the Wallwinder podcast. My name is Francis. Today I'm coming from St Albans in England and I'm going to talk to you about something slightly different. So we're not going to do the usual podcast. Regular viewers will be used to the uh, finished objects, works in progress, etc. And there'll be another episode like that coming in up in the next week or two. Um, but today I'm going to talk to you about my sleeping works in progress. So I had discussed um, on previous episode or maybe even two previous episodes about my um, sleeping works in progress um, and many of you wanted to have a little peek and see what I had going um, so I've got them all spread out on a table um, so I'll let you see those spread out on the table because it, it's a bit of a wake-up call as to just how much it's easier to hide it when they're all in a bag um, so I've got 12 um, to show you it's spread out on the table um, I came across a few other things and I thought you know I'm really not ever going to pick those back up they're definitely going to be frogged um, so um, and perhaps have only barely really been started so I'm not brought those out but some of these are nearly finished um, some maybe not so um, but anyway let's have a look and we'll go through and talk about those so um, before I get started um, what I've got on at the moment is my Angelou cardigan knitted in the Rowan model. Um, many of you will have seen this before. It's and there's a good reason for that. It's my favourite cardigan to wear at the moment, um, and I'll often be seen wearing it out and about. It goes with lots of my um, dresses, um, and it feels very comfortable to wear, and it's nice and warm. That said. I think the heating must be on well today because I am starting to feel a little bit warm in it, even though it is not warm outside. We've had a bit of a cold snap arrive um, here in the UK in the last few days. Um, so it is cold, but not in my studio. <laughs> so I may be taking it off in a little while. So if I do, that's the reason why. So um, I think now without further ado, um, 12 projects to get through. So um, yeah, grab yourself a cup of tea, get ready for a bit of a chat um, and uh, let's get started and have a look at what we've got. Right, so the first um, item that I've got is the Onzo cardigan jacket um, by um, Kim Hargroves. Uh, and this I have knitted in the... What's some... Rowan Mordell and Kid Silk Haze. Um, and I do absolutely love this shade of green. Um, and in the original pattern, now this pattern is in several books. It's certainly in Rowan's um, 40th, 40th anniversary book. Um, and it was in one of the row magazines, um, before that. Um, and I'll put in the notes where you can find it. So it's a fitted, um, jacket. Um, and, um, and I like that because of the shape of it. Um, I thought the shape was really nice. It's knitted in gaster stitch. Um, you've got some shaping going on here. Um, because it's garter stitch, it's quite a slow project. Um, and, um, that's as far as I've got so far, but actually it is a nice project and I definitely am going to pick this up and carry on with it. The original pattern is knitted in Rowan Kid Classic. I've knitted it, um, as I said, in the um, Mordell and the Kid Classic held together, which is a, a mohair. Um, so you've got a, a double knit held with a mohair. Um, and I just made sure I achieved the same tension for the pattern. Um, and um, off we went. So that's coming up nice. It's, yeah, I think it's going to, it is making a lovely fabric. 
Um, and this, I think, simply got put down last winter because um, we were approaching the summer and I decided that by the time this was finished, I wouldn't be wearing it in the summer, so I put it down for the winter. Um, and in all honesty, I should have picked it back up sooner than this. Um, but, um, yeah, but I will pick it up. So looking at the reasons, so I mentioned that there were a number of reasons as to why I have so many works in progress, so many sleeping works in progress. Um, and I, I think really I can put this down to this happening from post-COVID time largely. I can see when I look at this, it's all stuff that I either cast on during um, various lockdowns and during that time or a little bit afterwards. And what happened for me is that the um, Rowan's yarn store that I worked in sadly closed down. So we came back after um, the winter lockdown um, and um, it was a number of months after that um, that sadly the store closed down. And that had, as these life things do, that had quite a impact on me. Um, <laughs> firstly, in that I had a lot of yarn. The yarn was sold off very cheaply. Um, and um, having loved Rowan um, all my knitting life, pretty much, um, I, I, like many, many other people, couldn't resist an awful lot of yarn. So I ended up with this huge amount of stash. Um, and that coupled with the fact that I think um, I, I don't know, feeling that slightly lost feeling from, from losing a job that I loved meant that I kept casting on new projects. I always feel that um, I don't want to be too disciplined in my knitting because it's supposed to be something that I enjoy. So I don't want to have too much structure and discipline in it. Um, and therefore, if casting on something new helps you with a bit of nurturing, then why not? Um, so, and that got a little bit out of control. So whilst I will allow myself to do that normally, I also then normally have enough discipline to get things finished. Um, there's often a time in a project, isn't there, where we get to a point where we think, oh my goodness, you know, it's like when you get three quarters of the way up a hill, I always think, and you know, it becomes a little bit of a, little bit of a struggle and you and, and you you might push on through um with that and that, that's not uncommon it's not every project but it's not uncommon um so but um yeah but this is that discipline that I normally normally have um I think was dumbed down a bit with that overriding desire to keep casting on new stuff and hence um why it got a little bit out of control um, and the idea of when, he, when I started the podcast was to start um, tackling some of these. And I think I know that there was a pile of about six projects when I first started. And I did look at a picture of those recently um, and I've done all of those. So all of those sort of sleeping works in progress, they've all been tackled. So this is another 12 that I've got on from there. So Okay, right. Well, I've given you, let's, let's get back into looking at the knitting. This is the next project, which is Caroline by um, uh, Lily France or Lily Kate France. Um, and um, now, hang on a moment. Let me just get to grips with where I'm going with this. Um, it is actually cast off, but not finished. And... It's it's quite a heavy garment, but actually, maybe that's part of the thing. I'm not. I've got to this point of casting it off, and I'm now not sure that I'm going to wear it. Um, so, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do. Actually, let's try popping it off over my shoulders, even though it's not seamed. And seeing what it looks like right okay so this is it um and it's an interesting um rib it's not half fisherman's rib but it's kind of along that sort of um style where you're you're knitting um down in the stitches below i'm trying to remember because it's actually a little while since i 
sort of put it down. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm in two minds with this. My general inclination is I'm not sure I'm going to wear it. Um, it feels quite heavy. Um, yeah, I'll have to have a, a little look at it. I'm I'm not sure I'm going to wear it. The other issue that I've got is the raglan decreases. They're not as good as I would like them to be. And really, I should probably take it back down to that point if I'm going to keep it and redo it because I think I don't think I'm going to be that happy wearing it with those decreases um, not quite right. It's the first time I'd done those kind of de the raglan decreases within a, an unusual sort of fisherman's rib type stitch like that at the same time. It's interesting because I've been doing it on the Lanark sweater and they're looking beautiful, but yeah, it, it, the, and I did as I got further up, it, work, it was working fine, but early on I should have, of course, ripped back, benefit hindsight, ripped back earlier, um, but I didn't. And so, so it's a combination of those things. I'm not sure it's something that I'm going to wear and even if I was, I think I've probably got to take it back to that point. And then that makes me think, yeah, I don't really know if I want to do that. So so that is Caroline. So number three is uh, Raven by Marie Wallin. Um, and this is a beautiful steaked, um, well, the pattern's for a jumper, but I have steeped it to make it a cardigan. Um, and I mean, beautiful colors um actually marie wanning also did it this is knitted in rowan's felty tweed because it's what i had a lot of um and it's a yarn i love um her pattern was in something slightly different um it's a top down sweater um so yeah it's um and yeah so as i say it's going to be a cardigan um and i love the colors um, why have I stopped? So I've stopped in the middle of steaking. I've just, I'm in the process of reinforcing the steaking. Um, so I imagine that I have, I have stopped because the steaking takes a bit of concentration and I've only steaked a handful of things before. So it's not something I'm, you know, can do with my eyes closed. Um, so I think it's got put to one side for a time when I've got a bit more and then that's always dangerous isn't it whenever you put something aside you know so um yeah the other thing is I think it has come up a little bit on the small side um I think I chose a size with hindsight probably smaller than I should have done um this has been on on my needles I think I cast on with this three years ago um and I've been having a play around with sizing, especially because my sizing's changed. Um, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, I think it, it, I'm, I think I'm going to still, because it's so nearly there, I'm going to push forward with it, um, finish the steaking, block it, um, and there's a little bit of seaming to do under the arms, um, and then and then see how we go. Because to be honest, it's so close. If I decide it is too small, then I'll give it to somebody else to wear. I think, you know, that it's, um, I think with all that work um, and being the size, if that is the only issue, uh, I'll give it to someone else. But I, I do love it. I love the pattern. I love these little flowers along here. And it's got some, it's got that repeated down there. So it is a lovely pattern. I really like that one. Okay, on to number four. Okay, so number four is the Demotive Cardigan by D. Hardwick. Um, this was a very popular pattern um, when we were in the store um, and came from a book called Colourwork Knits, I think. I'll, I'll add that on the screen. Um, and it's knitted in Valley Tweed. Now, let me, I've got my hands full of different, yeah, this is the, Row of Valley Tweed, and I love the way these colours work together. Um, let's just pop those there. Okay, so I have done the back on this, um, and there we go. There is the back, isn't it lovely? Um, really, um, 
the motives are interesting because you do them with um, intarsia rather than ferrile, otherwise you get real stranding. Um, and um, But you do, it's like you've got, it's in, so this bit is ferrile, but this bit to this bit is treated as intarsia. Um, so you're stranding, but just within the motive, but not not beyond. So yeah, no, I, I love the way this looks. Now, if you look at the photo that I've put up on the screen, you'll see that it's got this interesting collar. Um, and I yeah, I love this pattern. There are lots of ladies um, from our um, Woolwinders group who have knitted it. Some are finished and some haven't. And that collar is clearly from those that are finished being a little bit of an issue. Um, and they found various ways of getting around it. <clears throat> but I'm thinking when I look at it, so this is going to be a dress cardigan, as you can see, it's not it's not terribly big. And, you know, um, but regulars will know that I do love a dress cardigan uh, and this will be perfect. And I love this red. It's just I think it's gorgeous. Um, so... Uh, I need to do something with the collar. And my thinking actually is that I'm going to turn this one, this cardigan, into a V-neck. So I'm going to take out the crew neck, which I never feel sits as well on me. The crew bit kind of, that bit gets in gets in my way. I don't tend to button cardigans up anyway. Um, and I like the shape that the V-neck gives. Um, so I think that's, that's my thinking. That's what I'll do. Um, I've got this far on the front so I think I'm just about at the stage and if I'm if I've gone too far I'll rip back slightly but I think I'm just about at a stage where I would want to start v-neck shaping um, so I will look at doing that but of course that will mean that I need to spend a bit of time looking at it but I definitely do want to complete this project I love it it's funny one of one of the ladies in our groups we we did a knit along um, at the weekend um, and she finished it there and it just looks lovely. She looked amazing in it and it just is a, yeah, it just is a cardigan that, that I really love. And as I say, lot, lots of people really love. So it, it will get finished at some point. And, you know, something else I'm noticing, I keep seeing the needles on these projects. I was very lucky to have been gifted a set of these lovely um, these are Rowan um, wooden needles so they feel nice to use and yet they stitches glide on them beautifully anyway of course I've been a bit short of needles well it's no wonder I've, I've got 12 projects on the go a lot of which have still got the needles sitting on them and you think I was looking for that size the other day when I was looking to cast something on the year no wonder no wonder I can't I never seem to have enough needles I have got enough needles. I've just got too many works in progress going on. So number five is Ginger by Lisa Richardson. And this is from, I've got two of my works in progress are from this book. Um, and that's probably because it came out, out a few months before the store closed. And so it was very much in my thought. And the store had a number of knitted samples sent to it, which of course we tried on. Um, and this um, and the other one from the Ease book looked really lovely on me. Um, unfortunately, in this one, I did I wasn't able to get the yarn that I wanted, which was the real green. It's sort of this color, sort of green. So um, I got I got this color, but it is it's, you know it's a different color to what I normally have. It's got this. You can see from the photo of the garment what it looks like so it's got this nice interesting edge down it and this is the front so I'm just trying to remember what I think you do two fronts um, and then you pick up the stitches and go across the back possibly I think that's right an awful lot of plain stocking stitch and it's often the one or something that I pick up and and knit in the car um, and Oh dear, I can see that sliding off the needles as well. And yet, here is another set of beautiful needles not in use because they've got a work in progress on them. 
Um, so, and it's knitted in denim revive, and denim revive is a recycled yarn, um, and it's said to wear really, really well. So, um, yeah, that that's that will be interesting when that gets bin. Am I going to finish it? I certainly don't have the urge to frog it. Um, I'm not awfully sure about the colour, but you know, if I'm not sure about the colour in this, I'm not sure it would be about it in anything else either. I don't know. I'm sitting in the fence on the fence about this one as to whether I would frog it. It is quite a nice colour on me, actually. I think I'm probably being a bit. It's just not quite got the wow that the uh, the green's got. So, um, but yeah, so that's ginger. Yep, and jury is out as to whether I'm going to finish that or not. So number six is Martha by Kim Hargreaves. There goes the ball yarn. Um, and it is a, another little fitted jacket. I'm definitely attracted to things that give me a bit of shape rather than hang on me. Um, and also things that are where the sleeve is is fitted up here rather than a drop shoulder. Um, so this has got a really interesting stitch pattern. Pick it up. Um, and it's, I'm trying to remember, I think it was four right. Oh, yeah, look, I've just started decreasing for the armhole so you can see where, where I am with it. And you can see it's shaped. Give you an idea of the, the shaping on it. Um, I think it's a four row. I'm pretty sure so. It's a little while since I've been knitting it, but I think it's four rows. And I think um, it's quite interesting because you um, lay the yarn across um, and slip stitches with the yarn in front, and then you pick that up um, on a subsequent row, and that then gives it that arrow shape that you can see um so is it yeah it's, it's a lovely pattern i think it's every i think every four rows so i think two of the rows you're doing something you've got to really think about and then the others are just knitting or purling um to create those lines so this yeah this is a nice pattern will i finish it i think i will yes i think so um it's interesting the two jackets i'm the Onzo jacket and this jacket and I think they might even be from the same book um they're certainly from a similar era um I'm kind of not sure about how I'll wear them and how they'll look how they'll look so in a way I feel I need to get on and finish them to be able to see if that's something to be sure that that's something that does fit me so yeah we will see but I yeah I do look like like oh my goodness I do like this. I do like the pattern um, and I would like to um, finish it. You know, the advantage of something that's fitted is that there's less material to knit, if that makes sense, as opposed to something that's really big um, and oversized. So, yeah. Oh, and I, I don't know if I said it's in Rowan Felty Tweed. Again. <laughs> so, number seven is Skylark by Martin Story. I have done the back of this this is a lovely pattern i've done the back of this pattern it's a cardigan and you can just see this is the bit that i love about it is this little cable detail on the bottom and then it's just stocking stitch the rest of the way up um but yeah the, the cable detail um is really nice this for me would be another dress cardigan uh, cardigan that I would wear with dresses. Um, it's got a fitted sleeve, um, which again is my preferred sort of sleeve. And this is how far I've got on the front. And then the front, this is the um, button band border, um, and it's got a nice. Um, I don't know if it has buttons on. And look at that. Um, Maybe it does, uh, but you can see it's quite nice and wide, quite deep, uh, um, so that will sit really nicely. I, so I love this pattern. I will finish this. Um, I have knitted some of this in the dark, 
and consequently there's one or two stitches um, where you may remember me talking about knitting in the dark in the car. Consequently, there's one or two stitches in the stocking stitch that have gone a bit rogue. And I probably, I need what I do, I need to go back and um, re, re get the crochet hook out and redo them. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really like this pattern. Um, and I was wondering whether this, I was comparing it. So I think that the sleeves on this jacket work fairly well. Um, in the terms of, of where they come to on my shoulders because sometimes even a fitted sleeve if the shoulders are too wide is dropping down on here on me because I've got quite small shoulders um, but this I, I've double checked this and this seems to be coming up to a similar uh, point so that's lovely because the, the problem can be is that sometimes I knit them too big following my bust size and then they sit down on the shoulders so I'm trying to even at points Quite often I follow one size here and a different size on, on the bus depending on what I'm doing, especially if I'm going top down. So so I really like the Skylark and I think that is one that will definitely get picked back up. Um, I think I'm just going to have to find a way to bring a little bit of discipline back into um, the knitting, i.e. probably casting on something new making new purchases and and in between making sure that I'm picking something up and finishing it and again because it's a dress card again it's not so big so it shouldn't be that take that long to finish all right on to the next one so number eight is Babery by Sarah Hatton um, and Sarah Hatton does do a lovely cable pattern here we go So it's a hooded jacket um, and uh, yeah, lots of lovely cable pattern, quite a complicated chart to follow. I think you could, you, cause you've got this section down here and then you repeat this middle section depending on your size a certain amount of times and then you go up and do this section, which I think is similar to the is it the same as the one down there? Yes. yes. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so so the, this is the um, back and you can see there's the armhole. So I'm kind of probably about halfway on the armhole. Um, I love this. I love cables. This is a problem for me though with, I find cables quite, um, I do enjoy knitting them, but they're not, it's not a fast project, you know, especially something, this is not a simple cable thing. There's a, you know, there's a big chart to follow. So following that chart makes it quite slow. So there's quite a lot of work involved. Um, and consequently, um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite slow. So it would, there, there wouldn't be much, and there isn't for me, let alone showing to you, much evidence of progress as you as you go along and do it so whilst I do want to pick it up I certainly don't want to frog it I'm also looking at it thinking yeah it is a big project and I don't know um yeah that's another one that I'm kind of undecided I really don't think I'd want to frog it because there's a lot of work in that back equally said I'm not halfway am I you know so um, but not only have I still got the two fronts and the two sleeves to do, but it's got a hood um, to go on it as well. So so there is quite a lot of, of progress still involved in that. Um, so, um, yeah, we shall, we shall see. We shall see. Okay, on to the next one. I forgot to say um, that the uh, Babery is knitted in Sofiac, um, which is it's a double knit. So you could do it, you could do the pattern in, in uh, any double knit as long as you've got tension. But um, the soft yak is a really nice, it's cotton, half cotton, half yak. So the yak gives it a bit of warmth whilst the cotton still makes it um, practical for the summer because it's got that bit of coolness. It kind of gives you that mid-season 
sort of um so it's basically a brilliant layer to put on on the beach or something like that which is what i had in mind so on to number nine i think we're on this is the focult shawl shawl wrap uh by lisa, lisa richardson um there's not an awful lot to show here it's not that big um Knitted in the Alpaca Soft, which is a double knit, the Rowan Alpaca Soft, which is a double knit. Um, and this was something that I cast on after we come out of the first lockdown. You know that time when they had us outside in the pubs and it was cold, so we were all looking for wraps and things to wear. I don't normally wear a wrap or a shawl, but it's it was quite useful for that kind of thing. But as you can see, I didn't get very far. I remember I was knitting. It does actually bring back memories that go around looking at universities with my daughter. Um, and I remember knitting it um, on those kind of things. Although it's not ideal for that because it's got this sort of moving um, change of pattern. Uh, so actually you do need to know how many stitches you've knitted where you are Um even though that's not a particularly complicated pattern, you, yeah, you do need to, to have a certain awareness of, of what you're doing on that. So, um, and I think the markers I put in there are simply, so I think they're every 20 stitches because there's a lot of stitches. Um, so I think that's what they're there for. Would I continue this? I don't know. Um, not even wild about this color yarn. I'm not sure it's me. I think it was just something that was left over in the store. Um, and yeah, part of me thinks that there should be probably a few projects that I need to just take the bull by the horns, frog it, and maybe just sell the yarn on because there's a number of balls, um, enough balls for somebody else to knit a garment from that are still um, unused. Um, and I could always have the stuff that I have used as well, but yeah, um, that may be the most sensible thing to do. Um, and I don't know, it looks like a fun pattern to knit, but it's in, it's a big pattern, obviously. Um, and I'm not really sure that I'm going to wear it now that they're not making us sit outside in pubs when it's cold. So yeah. Probably not. Probably is going to be frog, I think. So there we go. Okay, right. Let's see what else we've got. Right. So the next one is Nail by Debbie Bliss. And uh, this is an old Roman pattern from Magazine 28. So I've got a couple of older ones here where I've gone back to more vintage patterns. Um, or not super vintage, but a little bit vintage. Um, the two fitted jackets that I showed you uh, the Onzo by Kim Hargreaves and Martha, which I think is also by Kim Hargreaves. Um, they're also from older magazines as, as well. So let me show you this one. I just saw this. This is on the front cover, I think, of Magazine 28. And I saw it and thought, oh, I do like that. So here we go. It's curling up at the bottom, but so this is knitted in hand knit. Uh, no, not hand knit cotton. Some are like it. Um, cotton four ply, um, and um, it's always a little bit less forgiving, isn't it? Knitting cotton um, in a knitting a fair isle or colourwork pattern. Um, in four ply, uh, but it's not actually coming up too bad actually. Um, and certainly with a bit of blocking that will improve it as well. Uh, in the back it's looking, looking lovely. There's a lot of work in this. Um, again, it's a short cropped cardigan. Um, I still love it. There is a lot of work in this, a bit like the Bayberry cardigan. Um, beautiful pattern, love it but there's an awful lot of work. Um, so, and maybe I, what I need to do is to just find a way to sort of push on and um, through with those. Equally, I think both of them, if they do sit around languishing 
a few more years, but get picked up somewhere along the lines. That's that's great. That's still lovely. Um, so, but I do love these colours, and I the colours that were in the pattern, not surprisingly, are not yarns that are available anymore. Um, so I chose these these colours, um, and um, yeah, I love that little punch of colour that you get get in it. Which of course that design is in the original pattern. It's just they're not exactly the same colours. So. I love that and I can also see there is another lovely needle sitting there also not getting used so okay we are nearly there so number 11 is capsicum by Lisa Richardson and this is the other pattern that's from the book ease so I had the ginger cardigan um, and this is capsicum cardigan and what on earth oh i have oh my goodness i have stopped halfway through a row wow okay anyway we won't worry about that too much so i'll put a picture of the pattern up as well so that you can see the finished because actually what i've got to show you here is not anything terribly exciting um it's knitted in Rowan's Fine Lace and Kid Silk Haze, which is a mohair strand. Um, and actually, it's interesting because you don't knit every row. I think there's one or two rows. I think it's two rows where you just knit the lace. And then I think it's a couple of rows where you knit the mohair. It's been a while since I've knitted this pattern. And I'm not enjoying knitting this pattern. So the, the cardigan... When it came in, the sample came into the shop and I tried it on. It did look fabulous. It looked really nice. Um, slightly strange, unusual the way it, it ties at the front. Um, and I'm not sure I was going to do that. I think I would, because I don't normally do things, have my colours done up anyway. Um, but yeah, it looked fabulous. It was in this colour um, and I loved it. But um, I'm not enjoying knitting the pattern. Um, so it is going to be frogged and indeed I've already stolen this for the Onzo cardigan which was the first one you saw at the beginning not sure what I'm going to do with the fine lace um, it's a bit too bright on its own um, but as you can see with this it kind of does make a, a nicer colour so I don't know anyway there's only a couple of balls off it anyway so um, it, it might just be, just might be something again that I, that I sell. So that's getting frogged. Yeah, not not loving the pattern. Um, even though I did love the finished item when I tried it on. Um, but it's yeah, I haven't got the time and the inclination to, to push on any further with it. So let's go and find our last one, the grand finale. Right. So number twelve. Grand finale. Here we are. This is Flora McDonald by Sarah Dallas. And um, it's knitted in Rowan's Kid Silk Haze. Um, held double? Yes, held double. So this pattern was has been so popular that it's been in a Rowan magazine twice. Um, and it was part of the Rowan magazine from a couple of winters back, which was a Kid Silk Haze special. Um, and uh, people from the sort of Rowan community were asked about what their favourite Kid Silk Haze pattern was. And this was the one that stood out or won the votes or what have you. Um, and so this was pattern was updated and put um, in the new, that new magazine. Um, and I've, seen it like many people have before in fact I think it was in the anniversary book as well um and wanted to knit it so when it came out in that I thought yeah I'll do it and I've changed the colors a little bit um tweaked it around various reasons partly from I had some kids certain colors of kids silk haze in my stash um and also um just colors that I liked or didn't like I think it's got a pale pink in it um and I wasn't sure about putting the pale pink in it so yeah don't know whether 
Do you know, sometimes it's like when, when we were looking at the plateau cardigan and Erica Knight has put a lilac in it, which I don't like lilac either. And, and yet it works. So maybe, maybe I probably should have, perhaps I should have followed the pattern. I don't know. It's original, isn't it? But look at all these lovely colours that I've got. Let me show you all these. They're falling off my lap. But I just love it. It's like some kind of fruit bowl, isn't it? Um, yeah, they're just, they're just gorgeous. Um, so this is a fun pattern to knit. Um, straightforward stocking stitch now that we're past that little bit of colour work that was down here. Um, obviously there is this sort of bell bottom bit at the bottom, which has a lot of stitches on. So that first bit was a little bit more, uh, but now we're, we're on the stocking stitch and it's stocking stitch stripes, so it helps the stocking stitch go quicker. This got put down simply because we hit the summer and I didn't want to be knitting mohair in the summer. Uh, but this is very much something that I want to pick up and, and finish. It's something that I've always wanted in my wardrobe, so I will get on and, and do that. So that is all 12 of my sleeping works in progress. Um, and as she's been really helpful for me, so thank you for encouraging me to get them out because, um, yeah, getting them out, having a look at them helps you see what do you want to do and what do you not want to do. So we definitely identified a few there, didn't we, that I think are going to be frogged. Um, a couple that are in the maybe, maybe not pile um and quite a few that i really still want to knit so um uh, kind of encouraging in a way actually that um i'm still loving them um but just a bit daunting because that's a lot of things to knit so um but anyway <laughs> well i'm not going to allow myself to get too overwhelmed about it because as i said i'm don't want knitting to become a negative or a pressured or you know, uh, do it for the enjoyment and it's not hurting anybody if they're sitting in a bag, not being, not being, uh, knitted. Um, and you know, one, one day I'll get to it and, and get them done. So equally, I have also got a rather unhealthy stash for similar kind of reasons, you know, with, um, with the store closing, I did end up with feeling a need, to, a desperate, it's going to be kind of sort of feeling, um, that, uh, sort of buying the yarn. And, um, yeah, that's, you don't need me to tell you that there's nothing more dangerous than yarn being far, far cheaper than it ever normally is, you know. Um, so, and then also knowing that opportunity to be able to see the colours and choose them and play around with them, all that is also going to be gone. Um, so there's nowhere really around here because you've got to go quite a way to find a good selection, um, of row and yarn so but yeah so that's all my collection thank you so much <laughs> for sitting through and um listening to my wittering about my uh, works in progress issues um and um yeah finding out what what i've got i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was um useful um and um useful i you know i think perhaps it's something we all need to do isn't it get out our works in progress and look at it and see what we think but most importantly don't beat yourself up about it you know it's um yeah it's fine it's not as i say it's not really hurting anybody so don't get too worried about it <laughs> i'm very much trying not to no i'm not i'm not worried about it sorry i'm making it sound like it's a big deal and it really isn't a big deal um it's uh it's a little bit funny a little bit embarrassing um but it's definitely, definitely not a big issue. So, so I shall stop whispering on and say thank you so much um, for watching. Thank you um, if you have liked and subscribed. Uh, I so appreciate that. Um, we put a lot of work into the channel and you guys are helping me build it um, by uh, subscribing. Um, and, and I love to hear your comments as well because that's so encouraging. Um, I love being part of that greater knitting community, that worldwide knitting community. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, so thank you so much. Um, so that leads me to say, um, oh, 
actually I have added because I like to add a little bonus at the end there is a little um, walk on the beach that we are staying so I'm in St Albans today but normally we're down in Cornwall um, and there is uh, we take a little walk on the beach which is literally right down at the bottom of the hill where we stay um, and um, it's an evening walk and then we go up through so rather than walk up the road um, to go back up uh, to where we're staying we like to go through into the valley and up a little wooded um, footpath which is beautiful and it's by this little stream which kind of reminds me of Wales where my grandmother was and where I used to go a lot when I grew up um, so I've recorded a little bit of that it's quite a short one in comparison to what we normally do but I hope you enjoy that anyway so that just leads me to say thank you so much take care happy knitting and see you soon bye bye